I want to talk to you about how you can use your YouTube live stream analytics to actually unlock a lot more potential growth on your YouTube channel. Let's dive in. Now, if you open up any one of your live streams in YouTube studio and scroll down on the left and click on analytics, you'll start seeing an overview of how that video performed when it was live and then afterwards in the replay. Knowing how to read and interpret some of this data can be really crucial about improving your live streams moving forward. Let's start at the very top. Now, right off the bat, you're going to see the very top four tabs, views, watch time, subscribers, and estimated revenue. Now, depending on the goals you have for your live stream, this information can be interpreted in different ways. And some of this might be more important to you than others. Here on the StreamYard channel, you won't see much revenue because we don't run any ads, even though the channel is monetized. That's an intentional decision so that we can control the kind of content and the way it's presented to you without interruption. Now, what you're looking at right here is actually one of the live streams from the show that I do here on the channel with Dean Emin. It's our YouTube channel reviews live game show. Now, this particular live stream was designed to have a lot of community engagement right in the moment. It really isn't focused on trying to get a lot of views after the fact because we're engaging with channels right there in the live chat so we can talk about the things that they're doing right and some of the things that they might want to improve upon. So if you look at the beginning of the views over the life of that particular live stream, you're going to see that spike right at the beginning because most of it is concentrated right when we're live. We're also trying to use that show to get more people interested and try to get the subscriber growth on the channel elevated. So the subscriber growth in that short period of time when people are actually watching is important to us. We typically try to gain about 25 to 35 subscribers in any one of those given shows. Now, subscribers can be really tough for some live streams. A lot of times we'll see live streams lose more subscribers than they gain because people can be easily offended if they weren't called upon or noticed in the live chat. If your goal when you go live is to really just engage the most loyal community members, then subscriber growth itself may not be so important to you. But if it is, think about things you can do to make sure that the people who might be coming to your live stream for the first time feel welcome and feel appreciated and get reminded of the fact that if they aren't subscribed, that maybe they should click the subscribe button so the next time you go live, if they enjoy what you're doing this time, they'll be notified or they'll be more likely to see that live stream when it's served out on YouTube. Even having things like moderators in your chat who are really trained to make sure that all the people in the chat feel welcome and they feel part of the community can be super helpful. A lot of times having moderators who can help answer questions that people might be asking in the chat can make all the difference in the world to the person that you might not notice while you're live streaming. And they could get unintentionally offended that maybe you didn't respond to their chat comment. Now, if we scroll down a little bit here, you're going to see chat messages. What that's going to show you is the volume of chat messages that were there in the live chat, not the comments, but the live chat while you were live. And it actually shows it as a graph from the beginning of your live stream to the end of your live stream. Now, this is a really great way to gauge how people were interacting and responding to what you were doing while you were live. One of the things that I think you want to consider is that YouTube uses all of these engagement metrics to understand who to serve your live stream to the next time you go live. So people who are in there and watching, but also chatting in the live chat, maybe hitting the subscribe button or the like button, maybe they're actually sharing out that stream. Those kinds of things all together help YouTube to understand the kinds of viewers that it should be recommending your live streams to more often. Using things like StreamYard's free giveaway tool, which allows you to pick someone from chat just by having them type a certain word into the live chat, and the tool will pick someone's name from that chat, can be really helpful to get people typing and engaging with the live stream. A lot of people forget that these little engagement points are things that can really move the needle. I always remind people that a lot of times when I do channel consultations, I'll sit with a channel and I won't watch any of their videos but I will poke around their channel for 90 minutes, talking about their playlists, looking at the tabs, and going through some of the content just from the outside looking in. Every time I do this, by the end of the day, regardless of that channel size, it ends up on the home page of YouTube for me, the viewer. The reason that happens is because of my behavior. 
I'm sitting there poking around. YouTube is noticing the amount of time I'm spending with this channel, and it assumes that I'm interested in the channel and the content on it, regardless of whether I watch a video or not. So when you have people in your live chat spending time there and also chatting and engaging, these things are all going to be positive traffic signals that can help YouTube not only serve it to that viewer next time, but people who have similar viewing habits to the people who are there engaging with your live stream. Now, one of the things you want to think about when you're trying to improve the amount of chat messages and engagement you're getting from the live audience is how that'll work in the replay. Now, sometimes you may not want so much engagement from the chat because you want to make sure that afterwards in the replay, the people who might be watching again later on aren't feeling left out or like they needed to be there for this thing to actually make any sense to them. Sometimes having very structured bullet points and scripts during your live stream can help to make sure that the content is just as valuable in the replay as it is there in the moment. If we look at the analytics from a live stream that I did a few months back, this one looks very different. First of all, it's got a lot more views and it's got a lot more views over time. This live stream continues to drive views every single day, while the one that D and I did on the StreamYard channel is pretty much down to nothing. Now that doesn't mean either one of these live streams is better than the other because they're designed to do two different things and the analytics can show us if they're doing those things well. The live stream that I put on my channel was to help people understand how to use the software DaVinci Resolve. And the way that was built is with chapters and bullet points so that people can come back later on and rewatch portions of that to learn how to use different parts of that software. That one was built for the replay. So the goals for that live stream were to see subscriber growth over time, but make sure that views keep coming in because that's where it all begins and ends. As long as that live stream continues to perform over time, it's going to get more subscribers. It's going to get more engagement. It's going to get more likes, more shares, more questions, comments in the section below during the replay. Now, in your analytics, if you scroll down even further, you're going to see another data point called concurrent viewers. Now, this is going to show you two things. One, it's going to show you peak concurrent, meaning what was the most amount of people that were all there at the same time during your live stream. And then the average concurrent, which is going to show you the average amount of people that were there for the entirety of the stream. Now, I love looking at the graph here because it really tells you whether or not you were able to grab people and hold on to them for the length of the stream. For the people who were there, did they stay there or did they slowly trickle off? In a perfect world, we want people to come in and we want to hold on to them and have them watching for the entirety of the live stream. So having that view count go up and kind of be a relatively straight line, that can be a really good thing. Now, if we start to see at a certain point that they dwindle off, one of the things you want to think about is maybe the live stream went on too long. Check the length of your live stream. I'm usually trying to figure out the right length that works for most people's attention span. Often for me, anything more than 90 minutes is just too long. And you can even see that in my DaVinci Resolve live stream. Once it got past the 90 minute mark, I started losing the attention of the audience. And even though that live stream has done well over time, one of the things I can learn from this is perhaps in the future, try to limit the length and not go quite so long. Now, if we scroll down a little more, you're going to start seeing some of the audience retention reports for your live stream. Now, for some people, these can be a bit soul crushing because anything that's a longer piece of content, 90 minutes or more, you're just going to lose a lot of people at the beginning. It's just sort of par for the course over time. But I want you to make sure you understand what it is you're looking at. Now, a lot of the data in the audience retention reports comes from data that's also incorporating views after the fact. So, of course, in a live stream, if it's not built for the replay, you're going to have a lot of people leaving at the beginning and maybe not so many people watching deeper into that particular live stream. There's just not the same kind of value for them later on as there was when it was actually live. But one thing to pay attention to is some of the key moments that you might see listed here. Now, this can be a little bit confusing, too. YouTube likes to show us the percentage of viewers that were still watching at the 30 second mark. Typically because in most videos, that's a good indicator to how many people came in, started watching and kept watching. But here in the live channel reviews game show that D and I do, of course it takes a minute for people to log in, see the notification and start watching that live stream. 
So if you go back up and look at the concurrent viewers at the 30 second mark, the entire audience isn't even there yet. So if you were building just for the moment and you wanted that live stream just to do well with your immediate community while it was live, then pay less attention to the average view duration and pay more attention to the amount of concurrent viewers that were watching while you were live. Because that would be your goal. Get people there while you're live, get them watching and keep them watching as long as you're live. Now, if you compare that to the live stream that I did on my channel about DaVinci Resolve, the numbers look infinitely better in that first 30 seconds. Why? Because a lot of people watched it in the replay afterwards. So a lot of that data comes from when people were watching back later on. In fact, if you look at that live stream right when I started, it actually took a little bit of time for everyone to start coming in and start watching. It wasn't like the StreamYard live stream that we do where we've trained people to be there right when we start. They know that we're going to be there the second Saturday of every month doing this right at noon. If you see graphs like this where your live stream starts and it takes a while to get people in, what you can do is make sure that people are more informed about your upcoming live stream. Simple things that you can do. Schedule it well in advance. Make sure that the upcoming live stream has a featured section right on the homepage of your channel. You can also share that stream out ahead of time in places like your community tab. Remind people that they can actually set a reminder for your live stream so that they won't miss it when it goes live. You can also share that out in places like social media, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you might be. Let people know that the event is going to be coming up and that will give you a better chance of having them there, ready and willing to watch right when you start. Now, if your goal is to try to drive a lot more views with this live stream later on in the replay, then maybe think about spending less time in the chat addressing people and saying hi to folks and things that might not be very interesting to people who are there later on and not there live. Try to stick to the format of what the information is you're trying to get out there, and that'll have a better chance of playing well with the replay audience. Always try to keep in mind the needs of the viewer. If the needs of the viewer are, well, I needed to be there live for this thing to even make sense to me, then they're probably not going to watch the replay. One of the things you might want to look at while you're looking at the retention reports is scroll down to the bottom and see where it says, see more in blue. Click on that and it'll open up a deeper dive into the actual audience retention report. Now it starts off with that original audience retention report that we were looking at a minute ago. But if you click on that drop down menu and scroll down to compare to other videos, now you're going to see your video compared to similar videos on the platform in regards to the length, not topic, just the length. Suddenly that deep hockey stick retention graph that really looked horrible looks a lot better in context when compared to other videos on the platform of similar length. Anytime that you can get into the above average or high range, that's a win across the board. Another thing you can do is if you go up into the advanced mode of the analytics and then scroll down and look at that little blue plus button with the circle around it, that's where you can add other metrics in here to get a better understanding of how viewers are engaging with your live stream. You can add metrics in such as likes or shares. This is a great way to understand if people are taking prompts from you and actually hitting the like button or sharing that live stream out if or when you happen to ask them to do that during the live event. A lot of times asking people to share your content out isn't always just about getting more people in. It's also about getting those viewers to take actions, which YouTube interprets as viewer behavior. Even if people share out your stream and only a couple of people see the share and come in and add more viewers to your stream, the fact that those viewers actually shared it is yet another engagement metric that YouTube is going to use to understand the target audience better. And it's also going to improve the chances of your content being recommended to those viewers the next time you go live. Now you can also track a lot of these metrics in YouTube studio, right as you're live on the fly. So if you see that some of the concurrent viewers are dropping off, you can pivot your strategy and try to build the momentum back up. If people are leaving, then make sure you do things to engage the ones that are still there. If that's the goal of the live stream, your best bet for improving the performance of your live streams is taking a look at all of this data afterwards and seeing what things went right and what things went wrong overall.
Are they clicking? Are they watching? How long are they staying in your live stream for? Maybe you should lengthen or shorten your stream depending on the actions of the viewers based on your analytics. Are they subscribing if that's your goal? Are they liking? Are they sharing? If they aren't doing those things, then think about what you can do during your live stream to try to get those people more engaged. Try this on your next live stream and let me know how it works out for you. And if you want to learn more about how to make more effective live streams and grow your YouTube channel using StreamYard, click on the video that I've got on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.